This is the this is the hard drive. Let's uh, let's plug it in. In this hand, I have the smallest and lightest full-frame mirrorless camera ever built. And in this one, I've got the brightest and arguably the best ultra-wide-angle 14mm lens on the market. Put them together and you've got a formidable combo for landscapes, astrophotography, weddings and events. But we're about to push this kit to the limit by sending it into the upper atmosphere, right to the edge of space, to capture what will hopefully be the best quality raw images and 4K UHD video ever shot from this viewpoint. So, me and my colleague Sam uh, are going to meet here really early tomorrow morning at 3am, so that one's really going to hurt. Um, so for now, I'm going to uh, head back to the hotel, get some shut-eye, and we'll see you first thing here tomorrow. It's the morning of launch and we're at the launch site here in central-ish Sheffield. As we said yesterday, we've got two launches. The first one is going to be video, the second one is going to be stills and it's a nice day. At the moment it looks quite clear, there's a few wispy clouds around which is perfect. The space guys will be able to fill us in on uh, what we can expect from the weather. And I think Sam's over there now actually and he's talking to them so uh, let's find out what they've got to say. Chris, thanks for having us at the launch. Um, we can see the big balloon behind us. Talk us through some of the pre-flights, maybe the weather conditions as well. Well, first of all, the weather conditions are really good. What we first and foremost hope for is a still day. The, the winds are our foe. We've got to put a large amount of hydrogen in this balloon to give us our buoyancy, our lift, which is going to take our payload, which has all our exciting equipment on board, the fantastic camera equipment, the tracking systems, our live telemetry, everything that tells us what's going on as it happens throughout the flight. So we're now T minus half an hour to launch. This is the point in which we've got the balloon sealed, ready to go. The tech team are finishing their last minute checks. And before you know it, we'll be uh, next stop space. So the balloon will burst at a certain altitude, then it'll be parachute guided down? It will, exactly. So we have a parachute deployment system that comes into effect after the balloon essentially bursts because it cannot expand anymore. You'll notice that it's reasonably large already, but that's going to get so much bigger. By the time this gets to the top of the flight, we're going to be about 15 metres, sometimes up to 20 metres in diameter. And that's because as the balloon ascends through the thinning atmosphere, that gas inside wants to get out and fill that growing vacuum. So at some point, which we have to very carefully calculate and understand, it will reach its failure point, it cannot expand anymore, it will have a fantastic burst. That's the point at which the parachute will come into effect, but not straight away, actually. What's interesting is the payload with our Sigma FP on board is going to begin its descent through into the Earth's atmosphere at over 200 miles per hour because there's no air there to act against that parachute. We're essentially in, in space. But rest assured, when we get down to the lower, thicker portions of the troposphere, which is the lower portion of the atmosphere, it's going to slow down to a nice, gentle walking pace, and we'll be there with open arms to welcome it. So we're a bit closer now. We're up to the actual video rig itself. Um, we're just setting it up. Have you had come across any problems in the last sort of half an hour? Well, um, with the camera itself, nothing at all. But we found that whilst running the camera at the highest settings, the SSD was struggling a little bit with the temperature. Mm -hmm. So what we've actually done on this side is we mounted the SSD in like a ice bath situation just so it can radiate the heat. So obviously our FP has a heat sink on it. Yeah. What, how have you worked with that inside of the, in the inside of the chamber? So we found that in the air there's no convection to convect the heat away from the camera. So we've actually implemented our own thermal rig to try and heat up the space which the camera's in, which should in turn make it work in space. Okay, so we're nearly ready to launch, uh, just a couple of minutes away now, so they're going to attach the rig to the balloon and we're just going through our last checks on the camera, make sure the lens is clean, lens caps off, that kind of stuff, make sure the settings are all right. With the video one, we're a bit limited on time because even with a two terabyte hard drive attached to the top, this is a solid state drive, we only get about an hour and 40 minutes of record time, so it's not going to record the entire flight all the way up and down. So what we want to do is set it going right before we let it go so we get as much of the flight as possible. And of course we're shooting at full quality uh, Cinema DNG RAW, so this is, this is like seriously kind of data heavy, this file format, because it's 4K of course. So uh, yeah, hopefully it will go for the full hour and 40 minutes and we'll get the footage that we want at the peak of the flight. Be happy, okay, on to me. Go. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Tracking's good. Well, guys. Nice. Any final words? Yeah, speed. Go. Okay, so the first uh, balloon has been up for about half an hour now, and you can see there's a bit more light on the horizon. So the guys are just filling up the second balloon for the second launch. So that's going to take about half an hour to fill, and then uh, we'll be ready to let that one go too. So by the time that's full and we let it go, it should be pretty much fully light. 
So we've just filled up the second balloon. This one is gonna hold the stills camera, which is gonna be on an interval timer, which will take photo every five seconds throughout the whole journey. As you can see, we're just taping up the final bits and doing the last checks, and then it's up in the air and we're tracking it. Okay. Ready, chaps? Tracking is yep. good. good. Happy, Rich? Happy, Happy Matt. Turn the camera on. Yeah, yeah camera's already camera recording, camera double check that. Okay, see you on the other side. Well done, boys. Okay, so both balloons have gone. Very exciting. Hopefully we'll get the, the footage we want. So Chris's team has already headed off. Um, the idea is that they want to be at the landing location uh, as the balloons come down so that, you know, if it lands on or near a road or something, they can retrieve it immediately. So from a safety point of view, that's really important, but they won't tell us where they are. They won't even tell us whether we've retrie they've retrieved them because what we're gonna do is do a bit of a competition where Sam uh, chases down the stills balloon, I chase down the video balloon, and uh, the first one to find it wins. is the best. So yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that in a minute. So um, Chris, just firstly, uh, how do we how do we how do we find these things? How do we track them? Well, I mean, as you can see, Tim, we're we're talking to the payloads in real time. Both payloads, they're essentially taking a um, a binary code of information. It's talking to satellites throughout its flight and it's breaking that down into ones and zeros. Through an antenna in the base of each payload, it's firing that useful information down to us. Now, in our chase down vehicles, we'll have antenna that then feed into this laptop, which turns that back into the useful data we want. So what you guys are gonna do, you're gonna be armed with a setup each. That's gonna be your co-pilot on the road. Now, we're gonna have team A and team B, and uh, you're gonna be going for a different payload each. I'm not going to give you any more help than setting you up and letting you go. And the payloads are in the air right now. Payload one has just begun its descent. So it really is a race against yeah. time. We've reached peak altitude. It's now coming back through the atmosphere at nearly 250 miles per hour. Now the second one is on its way up. It's not quite past the Armstrong limit. That's the gateway to near space. So we have a little bit of time on that one. This is your co-pilot. Yeah. Trust it, listen to it, and uh, don't break any speed limits. So should we grab a laptop each and get set up? Yeah. Let's go. Let's Perfect. go. All right, let's do it. Got the laptop set up and uh, I'm going to start now heading towards the predicted uh, landing spot and then when we get a bit closer we can pop the coordinates in and get a more exact location. Okay and let's have a look so <laughs> it's going to be very cold uh, but it does look on track it does look on track so I think it's roughly going about 30 miles which will be which will be nice hopefully we can beat Tim. Okay, so we're there or thereabouts. We're not uh, so uh, this way. Uh, okay, so I've got the coordinates in the phone, and uh, uh, <laughs> where is it? Have oh, I gone? No, I've gone past. No, I haven't gone past it. I don't know where it is. I've, it should be right here, but not seeing it. So I guess we'll just keep looking. Maybe the coordinates are slightly. Oh, I've got a call, and it's. Uh, oh no, 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 no. Hello? Hello, Tim. Bad luck. No, you haven't found it. <laughs> yes, we've just found it. No way. Oh, fantastic. Oh, look, it's all right. It's all in one piece. It doesn't look too... Yeah, it's perfect. Have you found yours yet? No, 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 no. We're, uh, like, I'm in the location, but it's just not here. Well, good luck with it. Hope you get it. Yeah, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. Top man. See you later. Yeah, really happy for you. Yeah, cheers. Bye. That is the worst possible scenario. Sam's found his. I'd rather have lost all the equipment than this. This is a disaster. I don't ever want, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see Sam. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave Sigma. I can't, I can't go into the office after this. I can't go and sit by Sam in the office having lost. This is just embarrassing. I can see it. I can see it. We've got it. It's right over there. That's why we couldn't find it because the coordinates are a little bit off. Not far off, but just one field down.
All right, guys. So uh, here it is. This is the this is the hard drive. Let's uh, let's plug it in. Oh, I'm nervous. Hey! Look at that! No way. Look at the detail here. On the way up, we were able to get some fantastic shots of the sunrise at around cloud level. The FP dealt incredibly well with the large range of light intensities in the frame, thanks to its impressive dynamic range, and the RAW files could be pushed and pulled quite hard to ensure correct exposure across the entire frame. Up at around 30 kilometers, the Earth just looks incredible. And as we shot in RAW, there's no banding visible in the gradient of the Earth's atmosphere as it goes from that amazing sky blue to the black of space. The 14mm f1.8 lens is so sharp that there's very clear detail visible, including fields and buildings down on the Earth's surface. Over to the video, and we were a bit unfortunate to get a few ice crystals form on the front element of this lens, but putting this aside, the footage is equally as stunning as the stills. The 4K UHD 12-bit RAW capability of the FP renders incredible detail and colour depth. And when viewed on a 4K screen, the clarity is absolutely breathtaking. The very low angle of the sun meant extremely challenging conditions for the camera, but it coped remarkably well. And because each individual frame of the video is actually a RAW file, we were able to bring out detail several stops either side of the original exposure. In a second, you'll see the camera shudder. That's the balloon bursting. And then it starts hurtling back down to earth at breakneck speed. Overall, I think we achieved our goal of shooting some of the best quality stills and video ever taken from the Earth's upper atmosphere. What a project. It's incredible. Oh, it? Yeah, the results are insane. Almost perfect, really. Just a few ice crystals on the video, but other than that, I mean, we couldn't have asked for more. It was just great to see like a camera of that quality. Mm. You know, I mean, that, that is arguably the best footage Yes, you yeah, know, yeah. ever shot from the upper atmosphere. Well, 4K, 12 bit, it's, it's yeah. incredible, incredible the amount of detail around. you get from it. Yeah, it is, it is. And, and the stills as well, just looks amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait. couldn't have been better, could it? Unlucky you well, lost though. The wind, the, right, so after the first launch, mm -hmm. the wind was... Okay, yeah. ...more, yeah. and then and that's why. You owe me a coffee, let's go. All right. You can have, you can have yep. a regular latte. Double shot no, no. latte. No, 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 that, that wasn't in the, that wasn't Oak in the original. Milk. No, it was a, it was a lot, or you can have a filter coffee if you a want. Filter coffee? I'll give you a filter coffee. Large filter coffee. Small, small a filter coffee. Cream. No, no cream. No cream no at cream. all? No cream, it's just for, unless it's free. Just a, just a filter coffee. Hot chocolate? No, nope. 